And so once we sort of identify, okay, you do not want to ovulate, then we can sort of march down, okay, do we want to use, do you need contraception? Do we need to do contraception? But that continues to allow you to ovulate. Things like a Paragard IUD, spermicides, you know, um, there's a vaginal pH modifiers. There's many ways that we can provide contraception uh, without impacting your ovulation. Um, or if contraception is not an issue and you like to ovulate, then we go down the menopause hormone therapy route. If you said that 70% of women would be fine without ovulating anymore. Does that imply that 70% of perimenopausal women would be better off on oral contraceptives than on estradiol and progesterone? My patients and, uh, and yes, in my patient panel, they are happier on that. What's, what's really mm. interesting is um, I want to talk about, so when we think about menopause hormone therapy, we're thinking about 17 beta estradiol, which is this estrogen, it's an E2, and it's uh, the predominant estrogen when we're in our reproductive years. And there's so many benefits to this estrogen, right? Um, there are some new birth control pills on the market that have this 17 beta estradiol. So it's a fascinating mix where you're suppressing ovulation, you have contraception, but you're potentially still getting the health benefits of being on a 17 beta estradiol or an estradiol valerate, which which is metabolized into 17-beta estradiol. And so for my perimenopausal patients, once we establish, okay, do you want to ovulate? Yes or no. Do you need contraception? Yes or no. Then we can sort of think through how we pick a pill 